What on earth is that? It's a Journey in the Comics Network production! Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? I always ask that of all my prey. I just like the sound of it. Brought to you by the power of the Journey into Comics Network. This is the Journey into Comics Podcast. The show that's 100% dedicated to everything nerd. With your hosts, the Podfather, Nate Phillips, the Podmaster, Brandon Stone, and the Journey into Comics Network stepdad, Tyler McLaughlin. Time to make the Jimmy Chunks. Hey! Excellent! Finally. What did you do? <laughs> and here we go. Can somebody tell me what kind of a world we live in where a man dressed up as a bat gets all of my press? This town needs an enema. What's up, Tutorinos and True Believers? You are listening to the Journey in the Comics podcast, episode 323, right here on the Journey in the Comics network. I am one of your hosts, Brando, and joining me here is the podfather, Nate Phillips. Man, how is it going, Brando? Here's something. That was the first time, and I I think 294 was the last time someone that wasn't me did an it. Well, no, because you and TY did another episode, like 306, I think it was, it was somewhere where right, I wasn't yeah. here. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it's good to hear you intro the show and bring your voice and your flavor to the uh, to the start of the podcast, man. How's everything going in your world? It's going all right, I guess. Uh, I'm kind of in that funky fall blues, and I can't really explain why. I I don't know if it's the impending doom of what's don't still spoon, going. Don't spoonerism fall blues because you'll get ball blues. <laughs> <laughs> ball blues. That's not good for anybody. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's kind of the day in, day out grind, number one, but then also just the unknown of what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, if anybody, everybody out there listening in the world that we know what's going on in the world, we don't really have to dwell on it. But things are getting bad once again. And it doesn't seem like on the whole that the groups of governments are looking to do anything drastic or crazy. Um, but state by state, it is. And so we, we, we just won't know until we get there. And if you guys are watching on video, I do have – I kind of did that little Zoom background thing with my thing because there's stuff behind me, and I didn't want to bother you know, tearing it down, putting it back up, baby suits back here. So I'm just doing it for this episode because why not? And I found this cool little DC Batmobile motif. I love uh, it. Going on in the background. But no, Nate, in my world, everything is kind of going okay. Canceled Thanksgiving. Uh, we're not doing it. I mean, we're going to do stuff here. We always make food here. Uh, but this was going to be the first Thanksgiving without my dad, the first Thanksgiving without grandma. And uh, we were we, the family kind of made the decision not like as a whole, like on my mom's side, uh, not to do anything big anyway. So it was just going to be like my mom and her boyfriend coming over. And we were going to do that. And But with different states having different levels of rules, um, <sighs> I just decided to hold off, man. Hold off and do it when it's healthy, you know, and safe. I think that's the smartest and best play, too, you know, because uh, things are ramping up. You know, I told you guys last time we were on the podcast, I'm doing Instacart now. It's been a thing that's been in my world. And this week I had three deliveries, I think, total, where it was set them on the porch. We're all quarantined. We're not going to open the door. And it's like, oh, it's spreading fast and heavy, and it's 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 coming with vengeance this mm-hmm. time around. And I don't want to like use scare tactics or make people feel afraid because you know this is not what the podcast is for. But the reality is, is that shit is getting very very serious. Worse than March, worse than July. We are here at a very real crux in our nation's history, and I, and I, I'm just. Um, cautiously waiting to see how things unfold no i agree with you but we are approaching the most wonderful time of the year and it is going to be a wonderful time of the year this year 
as on Christmas Day, Wonder Woman 1984 gets released in theaters and on HBO Max at no additional cost. That is some of the best news as a DC fan. I was super hyped to see this movie anyway. The first Wonder Woman movie was a um, gracious surprise, and it really wasn't all that surprising that it was good, seeing as how I actually liked every minute of the movie that she was in in BVS. So I was like, give me some more of that. And we got that in spades in that first movie. And it was just a generally well-done movie. It, it was, whereas when you have B, like Man of Steel, BBS, Justice League, and, and those three, uh, they're, they're, they're all different beasts to tackle when you're going to start looking on the, on the nuances and the good and the bad and the uglies and all with that. All, each film has its own different story and its own drama. Wonder Woman doesn't have that. It stands off on its own and it, it's definitely noticeable that it has a lot less drama going on in the background of anything going on with that film. And honestly, I thought Aquaman was kind of the same way, but maybe a step just down just a tad. Uh, both were very enjoyable, but Wonder Woman really knocked it out of the park. And from everything that I'm hearing, this next one is going to do as well, and I'm super excited for it. It's definitely going to make for an awesome kind of Christmas evening uh, as we sit around eating some Christmas dinner and uh, turning on some old Wonder Woman, man. What do you think about that? Well, and I mean, I guess the real question is going to be, um, look around here. If you're a parent and you're listening to the podcast right now, subtle spoiler advisory for your children to mute the audio right now, because um, maybe you're a parent who's going to be setting up Santa in the, in the evening and whatever. And uh, maybe at two o'clock in the morning, HBO Max drops this. Maybe it's not going to be a Christmas day thing as much as they're just, as soon as it's December 25, here we go. Which means that if you don't, stay up and watch here's a really bizarre thing about 2020 you could actually wake up to spoilers of a movie that has <laughs> literally just as soon as you exist in the day has just come out to you so, so uh I, it, you know it is an interesting juxtaposition if i have the opportunity to watch it on christmas eve it, it, and like it into christmas morning i'm definitely going to take that opportunity because of exactly what i said i don't want to be spoiled on anything they might have some big surprises who knows what they're going to mm -hmm. do this is the first real look at what we're going to call phase two of dc's extended universe and this is phase two where they're pivoting really hard they're making bold decisions and moving in a really brilliant direction and trying to steer their ship where they want it to go so i'm looking forward to this it is a really great exciting little christmas gift um it makes me curious does that mean that and I know this was not intentional, but does that mean that Wonder Woman 1984 will be forever remembered as a Christmas movie? Uh, like, but but completely unintentionally, right? Because it was really supposed to come out in June, and we were supposed to yeah. have had it by now. Same with like Black Widow and everything. And but maybe so, or, or at least a lot of people are going to remember it for watching it around Christmas. Uh, the big thing for me, Nate, is that it, it, it was the smartest move that they could have made. Uh, to, to 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 release it on HBO Max at, at at no additional cost. Now, granted, you're not getting any extra money. You could have put it up on the on the rental thing, like some films have done, and they are still going to put it out in theaters wherever it is still safe to do so. And they encourage people to go to the theater and and experience it that way. But quite literally, I have no intention of taking myself or my family to the theater for the very for the long time for uh, for the foreseeable future. Probably not for another year or two. And uh, the fact that for 30 days, because it's going to be available on HBO Max for 30 days, you're going to get a brand new movie coming out to be able to watch from the safety of your own home that, that's hyped up. And it doesn't cost you $30 like it does on Disney+. Plus. You, you, you got me. When I saw that, I actually tweet replied. I don't, I don't do a lot of that. <laughs> uh, but I tweet I would have, to the director of the film. She, she shared it. And she was so excited to get. Is it still Patty Jenkins? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. She did the first one. She did a fantastic job. Exactly. And so she's like, you know, we're so excited to announce this and, and to bring this to you guys to be able to enjoy at home. And and I assume they made that decision because of where we're at in the crux of the pandemic with things getting bad again. They were, they, you know, because they hadn't officially. I mean, we're almost a month out, and they hadn't officially put out. Are they or are they not going to release it on Christmas? And, and I think they're holding off because they're, they're wanting to see how bad are things going to get in what pockets of different areas? How you know What are our options? And quite literally, I completely understand her position. of I've been sitting on this movie for way too long. We need to get it out. 
and she said we're just happy to get it out to you guys either way either way that you guys can see it please see it and i sent her a tweet reply and i said thank you so much for your hard work you kicked ass on the first one and thank you so much for sharing with sharing us with this in a way that we can do it safe and and, and for those that already kind of support that warner brothers uh, umbrella with that uh, hbo max and i feel like it is a bit unfair because there's some countries that don't have HBO Max yet, and there's some platforms that don't have it yet. But if you keep doing stuff like this, it's going to raise up that uh, that stock value of HBO Max. I mean, not only are we going to be getting brand new uh, DC and um, other uh, brands of shows that are exclusive, new programming to the, to the platform, but when you're going to be bringing out Wonder Woman, a theatrical release straight to your living room and I don't need to cop out another $30 on top of what I'm already paying you. Like that was a big thing with Mulan and the, and the debate with black widow. It's like, would I watch it if they put black widow on Disney plus if it was on Disney plus and I didn't have to pay extra for it. Yes, absolutely. I'd be there day one. But if no you're at, if you're asking me to chop to chalk over 30 extra dollars. Now one, one could say, well, you would pay that to go to the theater anyway. No, you're right, and probably at the end of the day, you would pay that. However, I'm not going to the theater, and you're it's on a service that they're saying, well, you get to keep it, but it, but eventually everyone's going to have it anyway. That's where it kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's it's that nuance. Uh, yeah, you basically paying this much for early access, and I completely also understand the the legitimacy of you know paying and supporting all the people who worked on it to make sure that everyone's getting paid. And, you know, the studios aren't losing money. And that's the thing is that I, I understand that. But I also feel like, you know, HBO Max is probably shelling out some money to do this anyway to help further on the brand and get more subscribers. Oh, look at you. Look at you doing your doing your SeaWorld uh, oh, a- yeah, Aquaman type baby. deal. Yeah, hey, man. Uh, <laughs> but no, I'm super excited to see it. Uh, I'm super excited to, uh, that we get this awesome treat. Uh, for Christmas, and there's also some other DC stuff kind of going on. Uh, 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 Zack Snyder announced that the new version of Justice League is going to have 150 minutes of unseen footage. That that that's humongous. That's a whole movie. I know, <laughs> I know. It's a whole literal movie, two hours and change. And I'm excited to see what they do because literally, uh, was it uh, Ray Ray Fisher, right? He he said that they ref- they reshot literally every scene that he was in when 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 they did uh, reshoots, so his storyline is going to be a bit different, okay. And then of course you have these 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 reshoots that have gone on. They did a reshoot with Ezra Miller over Zoom. Did you know I that? saw that? That's incredible. Yeah, where they set up some cameras. Hey, well. well- he was on set somewhere else doing yes. Fantastic Beast Three, I yeah. think. Yeah. Over and in London, he had access to all kinds of visuals. They set up all kinds of screens for him to use as reference points. Like they did it up for him, but they had him directed. Zach called him up through Zoom and yeah. directed. Hey, man, do it better. It was shit. Well, Try again. Yeah, but I mean, it's just I'm so excited to see the final product of what they're doing with this because this is just so weird. And interesting. Obviously, it's not like they filmed a whole ten minute sequence with Flash over uh, on a green screen. No, they're probably filling in some spots here and there. But he goes, "I need something here. He needs to run and pivot here, and I need you to capture this on green screen so I can plug this in and then put some shaders on it. And then hey, there you go. It looks good. You know? And isn't Fantastic Beasts a Warner Brothers property, anyways? Yeah. So of course, so see, there yeah. it's all in house. It's all winning. Yeah, so like the the hey, you know, Warner Brothers, hey, can uh, it, it's all it's all their equipment anyway. You know, can we use it? Yeah, sure, go ahead. We're on break right now. Um, no, I'm super excited for that. Uh, of course, we also have next year. Uh, I believe they're releasing it next year. The you know the you know, the Suicide Squad movie coming out next year, and then we've got uh, we've got another Aquaman coming down the line. We've got another Shazam coming down the line. Fury of the Gods. And and then, of course, we also have, uh, even further than that, Black Adam come, coming down the line. And then uh, Henry Cavill has signed on, apparently, a, a new contract to do some more appearances. Not necessarily a full-blown movie for himself. But also, Zack Snyder was asked about 
you know, do you have an idea for what would happen after Justice League? And he says, yes, of course I have a loose story idea of what, of what a Justice League 2 would be or where the story would go after this. But when asked whether or not he was wanting to do more, he kind of played it a little bit more coy and said, nah, because I'm happy I'm getting to do this and finish this. I'm cool, uh, was his quote. I'm cool. Basically, if he finishes this up and never works again in the DC stuff, he's cool. He's had a good run. He got to tell a story. He goes, look, you're getting another Aquaman film. You're getting another awesome Wonder Woman film. You're getting Shazam. You're getting Suicide Squad. You're getting the Batman. You're getting other stuff that's probably going to come down the line that hasn't been announced yet. It's like you got way more cool stuff that's going to come out than just more Zack Snyder movies. He goes, but I, I, I will say he said he's cool. But I bet you if it does well and they're like, hey, do you want to do a this thing? He might go, maybe so. He didn't say no. He just said that he would be fulfilled, I guess. Well, with Zach, you got to think. It's him. And again, to go back to Leonard Cohen, Hallelujah, and how he utilized the lyrics in that song to really mm-hmm. tell his own story. He is getting a shot at redemption to tell his story. And that's where the I'm cool comes from. He is saying. No matter what, I'm gracious and, and I'm grateful that I've even had this much of a chance, that my vision is still going to be able to see the light of day. When in the reality is, man, 99.95% of the time, if a director is replaced and the studio moves forward, you don't see the original director's vision. That's not, it, doesn't, you, it, it doesn't happen. But Zack Snyder is such a unique character unique personality he has such a unique visual and vision on the you know the entirety of all his movies he makes look at 300 look at Watchmen, look at bbs everything has a unique scheme you know he's good but i tell you what come may or whatever whenever the justice league the Zack snyder cut of justice league drops we see it and it catches fire and it's like a holy shit this changed the game and this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, better than any of the Avengers movies or whatever. I don't, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be, but if there's definitely going to be a second one and that's just playing ball the way you have to play ball. Oh, I'm cool if nothing happens, but you know that if the fans demand it, if it catches fire, like I'm assuming it will. And and double-edged sword too, though. He puts all this work, all this time, all this effort in 150 minutes of new footage and it is dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we have a whole different story to talk about. There's going to be a lot of coverage here on the podcast. Maybe a journey into comics 350 or something as we inch closer to that number. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, the Zack Snyder thing, you know, it's cool. Uh, did you see the monochrome trailer before it got pulled? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was really cool. I, I, I'm curious if we will see a cut of the movie that is like where you can choose. I want to watch the monochrome because he keeps hyping the monochrome thing. It's been more than just like, hey, I'm using black and white. Yay. He's hyping. It's monochrome. There's a reason I did certain shots in certain ways. Maybe, and I don't know, maybe there'll be a cut where we'll get the Blu-ray version that'll have the original version and the monochrome alternate edition. Kind of like uh, the Logan release that the, that got put out a couple years ago. They have the, black and white, yeah. The black and white version, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I want to say Walking Dead did that too, where they redid, they re-aired the first whole, season, first season in black and white, yeah. Um, but no, I'm just super excited. That. It's a great time to be a comic fan. It's a great time to be a comic movie fan. Things are kind of firing up uh, on on both sides of these of the proverbial aisle. You know, a lot of cool DC stuff in the works. We get a great, great, a great, awesome little Christmas present and some good stuff to look forward to next year. And then, of course, uh, we, as we mentioned last week in January, we get WandaVision uh, starting a few weeks after uh, Mandalorian wraps up, which we haven't. We're not talking about Mandalorian this week, guys. Both Nate or I, we have not watched the most recent episode at all. Nope. I, I, just, bad. I didn't have time. I didn't have time this weekend. Like, we were supposed to be cleaning all day yesterday. Oh, the Hall of Justice. <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to be cleaning all day yesterday, and my wife was racked with a really bad migraine, so I had to take care of the kids all day. Could I have watched it? Technically, yes, but would they have been interested? Absolutely not. <laughs> would, would you have been able to keep what is going on at all? Absolutely not. Probably not. Um, no. Reporting live from the Hall of Justice. So, 
do you, do you remember Space Ghost Coast to Ghost? I love Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I watch it all the time. There's an wow, episode. Wow, 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 wow. There's a there's an episode with uh, I'm trying to remember is Dave Dave Thomas the the he's a Canadian comedian. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and um, Space Ghost leaves the show, and he goes to the Hall of Justice. Well, because he's looking for work. But it shows it's like it's like outside the hall of justice is this hole <laughs> of justice, <laughs> and is this a hole <laughs> with these like uh, D list comic characters or custom characters from Space Ghost? I don't know. And they're and they're, he wants in, and they're like, uh, no, there's uh, nobody down here right now. It's like you're all invisible down there, aren't you? He goes, don't lie to me. I can tell you're there. And then uh, he ends up like he's threat like he's so mad or something about getting toilet paper and wrapping the whole godforsaken planet in toilet paper. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! Uh, I need to watch that. I've been like I said, I've been watching Space Ghosts pretty much like every night before bed. Um, and there are some really funny, just ridiculous episodes. There's a Metallica and, episode. Uh, say what? I didn't know that. I have to find that. I'll. I'll I will. I'll, it's, dive in. it's from the load era. It's James and Kirk. Oh, that's great. That would be amazing. Uh, we we nerded out on Metallica earlier today in we the did. future, in the past, depending on when you may hear that eventually. <laughs> when it depends on when you're hearing that uh, versus when you're hearing this. True. Yeah. Timey wimey and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, man. As far as like DC news, what other stuff is really. Uh, been popping off. I don't really know of anything that I can think of. We were going to cover Death in the Family. Uh, as, as, that's the next comic that we're going to be reviewing here in the show. But as we've said before, we don't really want to do that unless we're all three, including you know our boy Ty, going to be here. And his D and D session was going to run a little long today. I need to be out at a certain time today. Um, otherwise, I would face certain an unforgivable wrath, and I, I would just rather not do that. And that's uh, you know it. Let's just uh, kind of stay away from that. But we're going to try and hopefully get back to that next week and, uh, and and start that. I did read the first book. It's very interesting, and I, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. But as far as comic news, I really, I really can't think of anything. As far as movie news on the DC world, there's not much. Uh, t- TV world, uh, Black Lightning is ending, I guess. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I saw that. Tony on, Isabella will be upset. I saw, uh, saw that on Twitter yesterday and oh yeah not much else i can't think of anything else on the on the dc front on the marvel front we got some pretty cool news coming out of that where uh more and more seems to be getting thrown at thor love and thunder uh as we got word that chris pratt is going to be reprising the role of star lord on there i think we talked about that a little bit last week right yeah, we talked about how it's definitely Chris Pratt and possibly also going to be uh, one Vin Diesel. Yeah, for Groot. Um, and and who, who else? Who, know, who knows who else might make an appearance and show up? Dude, you can't have um, you can't just have those two and not have Rocket there. If exactly, especially with Thor. I mean, unless the story for Guardians Three is really going to be a story centric around Rocket, like the rumor is. Um. Then you can actually have an excuse as to why he's not there right now, or why he maybe jumped ship, or or or, or, or he's off doing something because it'll lead into Guardians Three. Uh, but exactly, but quite literally, the chemistry between uh, Chris Pratt and uh, Rocket and Thor is a must. Like it, you got one of the biggest moments in. in in, in Marvel Cinematic History of, let me introduce you to my friends. This is Rabbit and Tree. <laughs> I am Steve Rogers. Oh, I am Steve so Rogers. Good. <laughs> like, and also in, in Endgame, when Rocket is running from all the Asgardians and they're all yelling, stop that rabbit! <laughs> oh, yeah. Something that I didn't catch until like my third viewing, by the way. Um, because I think on the second time I actually went to the bathroom during the Asgard section of the movie in, in Endgame, huh? and then when I saw it the third time, 
I was like, oh, crap, they called him a rabbit. Like, <laughs> like that wasn't just a Thor thing. <laughs> like, all the Asgardians think oh, yeah. a rabbit. <laughs> but, all Asgardians are confused. Uh, Black Panther. We know, a re- we know a film date for that? I think that is honestly one of the bigger headlines this week because of, obviously, the kind of year we've had. We lost Chadwick Boseman back in september was that late august september it was late august okay uh, the so 24th did you hear about spider-man no i don't think i've heard about spider-man, spider-man no. miles morales has a small tribute oh, to bozeman i heard about it i have not seen what it is do you have the information on that and want to share with us it is a it is a street sign and the street is called bozeman way oh that's beautiful Mm. Uh, but to get back to the to the to the uh, actual Black Panther two movie, with Chadwick passing away and everything that's kind of happened. Oh God, the dogs have decided to bark. Hold on, that's probably <laughs> awful. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> they didn't hear that. I muted it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. it was <laughs> really loud so i went uh, ahead and muted it and i and i and, and so i could hear the barking and then you just said like <laughs> silence i kill you <laughs> it's the only thing i could think of to yell at those damn dogs oh dude uh, like but yeah, i chat- just remember like back in the dog I just remember all the time when uh, when Kevin Smith's dog would always bark and he'd yell at him. It was like, "Will you be quiet? We're trying to talk about the Batmobile." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to 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 steer the ship back, uh, July twenty twenty one is the official start date for filming of Black Panther two. It's interesting to note they have said without question they will not use CGI to recreate Chadwick in any way, form, or fashion. So I'm pretty sure we're going to actually really, oh, man, how hard is this going to be thinking about it? Like, we're probably going to have to witness an on-screen death of Black Panther where we don't see his face. And then it goes into, like, the everybody's trying to scramble to figure out what to do now that the king of wakanda is dead and then it maybe maybe could be shuri's rising up story uh you know they've really built a nice strong base for her to be a smart intelligent leader so uh i'm looking forward to it i just like i said the the news in itself that they actually are still moving forward with the movie and aren't really changing plans too much it seemed like that was right about the time they were going to originally plan recording anyways or filming anyways so uh yeah it's um what are your thoughts on Black Panther 2 and this announcement? Um, well, a part of the announcement was that uh, Shiri's going to play a bigger role. Uh, so that uh, that in itself almost kind of tells us what's going to happen uh, in the story a Here. little bit. Uh, that that she will ascend, I guess. Uh, I know that's a hard question. That's a hard question for, for writers and for the creative team to answer. Because th- 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 there are some who would instantly say, well, it should be this person. It should be Shiri. But there's like... You are thrust into a to a no win situation by having to fill the shoes of of a, not only just a character but like like an amazing actor, and you have to move forward. That that it's going to be difficult. That's going to be a difficult first day on set for everybody. You know what I mean? However, I know for a fact, yeah. just by knowing the kind of person that he was, that he would not want them to hesitate, move ahead, forge ahead. You know. You know, I may have helped. honor him by doing the work. Yes, you know, uh, I I may have carried that torch, but now this torch I give it to you, and you know, uh, you you are very capable of of handling this and and making it big, not just for and not just for for us comic book fans, but for culturally as well. And I, you know, I think it's uh, interesting to note this, and, and this is retrospectively thinking about things. When we saw Infinity War and Chadwick and Black Panther and T'Challa get dusted, right? Everybody said, there's no way he stays dead. He has another movie. They had just literally announced Black Panther 2. Yeah. 
But yet, in some weird way, here we are, and exactly the prophecy of moving forward without him for that sequel is happening. Yeah. And um, heavy, heavy shoes to fill, man. Absolutely. I do not look forward to, or I, no, I don't, I, I just, I guess I don't um, envy the role that Ryan Coogler or Angela Bassett or Letitia Wright or Winston Duke or any of the cast who is going to be involved with this movie has, because like you said, that first day is going to be fucking heavy and really hard to deal with. And then, um, you know, hopefully at the end of it, there's an amazing product that can honor the legacy of Chadwick, push Letitia and Shuri's character forward in the narrative um, and, and, and give us a, a different insight. Now, it's also really interesting to note that here we are in phase four, we really feel like we're in an era where a lot of our characters are getting the quote unquote reboot. We're going to see Lady Thor, you know, uh, you have Falcon taking over the cap. Uh, mantle and now Shiri is going to be taking over Black Panther and it just feels like it's like even though the timing of that was terrible and wasn't right it just everything is lining up for it to be like it was meant to always be this way yeah in a weird very bizarre way yeah I mean for sure but I mean nonetheless you know we're going to move forward uh I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the outcome you know, uh, of what they're going to do. And, and, and then, of course, the story that they're going to tell and how it's going to tie in. Because everything that we know so far with the WandaVision story and then the little trinkets of information we have considering the possible Spider-Man movie, uh, seeing as how that could also blend into the Doctor Strange, because it's going to be what? WandaVision, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man. It, it could all link together as far as this multiverse of madness and how it, it all gets uh, messed up. But that could literally be how they bring in Kang the Destroyer. Um, yeah, because the because the realities are getting messed up, the timeline is messed up, and then you got this 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 time hopping bad guy. Um, well, Kang the Conqueror is more like the Time Police, really. I mean, he's altruistic in his. It's very yeah. Thanos when you think about it. Sure. Like he his reasoning is smart. Like, hey, you're gonna fuck up all the timelines, and then there's not gonna be any time because everything's gonna collapse in on itself. We're gonna have secret wars bro yeah. and everyone's like oh that's not gonna happen that'll never happen we're not gonna get secret wars man it's never coming down and then kang's like you bitch it's coming here you go and, and, and then and then shit falls in but um the the whole everything that we're gearing up towards is very interesting because you have all this news and all this mcu based stuff and there is still one x factor that's sitting outside of the bubble waiting to get tagged in like red rover red rover call your wade wilson on over uh because you know we're still waiting in the wings to find out will deadpool 3 happen is it is it going to be r-rated is disney going to do it are they going to get a new studio to, to, to make it happen are we have a different director is ryan reynolds even going to be involved and like in less than a couple of days all those questions were very swiftly answered as we got a headline from deadline that's hard to say that Rated R officially through Disney officially. Ryan Reynolds will be working one hand, hundred percent hand in hand with Kevin Feige to make this movie what it should be. And it's probable that we will have a new director, mainly because David Leach, who directed the second movie, is busy through the entirety of 2021. And the rumor now is they are on a fast track to get Deadpool um, in production, filmed, and out the door because they feel like they're sitting on a giant pile of money because they are. <laughs> well, absolutely. And just what I said earlier, every single studio is suffering right now. Just, just simply because you have delays, and then when you have movies coming out, they're making a far less money than what they were anticipating. I mean, just look at uh, anything that has come out already uh, in, in, in the theaters. You have you, Just by volume, you cannot have that many people going to the theater, even if they want to. You, you can't. And then, um, of course – there what people do go that they, they go and they get that money but then there's going to be a certain percentage of people like me who uh no matter how bad i want to see it i'm not i'm not going to go so uh it's challenging hopefully by this time next year we'll be looking into the next year <laughs> in, 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 into 2022 as being a you know hey this is we're going to celebrate this return to normalcy uh, because i don't think that, that that's going to come uh, dramatically over the next year it's going to be incremental 
uh, of course, when we so have... you're essentially saying that COVID is nerd edging us right now, <laughs> and that we're not gonna have any release until 2022. Here's what I hope. Okay, look these these are the things that I want. We already know that we're getting Justice League next year via HBO Max at no additional cost. Okay, um, I at the wanna... end of this year we're gonna get Wonder Woman, which is yeah. Uh, so like what I want, what I would like is a feasible way. This is not going to cost me thirty dollars to watch Black Widow. Um, I would like to see uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife in a very feasible way. You know, even if you put it, you baby, know, please give it to me. Uh, I just saw a, a a little thing that said they are completely one hundred percent done with the movie now. They they are completely mixed down and are completely ready to put it out. So very excited oh, about that. Excellent. Very excited about that. That that's a movie. Of course, I mean the toys are already in, in, on on the shelves. There was because the movie was supposed to have been out already, just like the others the movies that we've talked about. But it, it's really cool to go to the theater. I'm sorry, not go to the theaters. My brain keeps talking. Where I mean, because we're wanting about, to send you there. Yeah, exactly. No, uh, going into Walmart, for example, and seeing the old school Ghostbusters toys that were around when we were kids. Some of those have been re released. Into the stores and like it's the action figures that kind of look like more closely resembled into the uh, into the real Ghostbusters cartoon, cartoon versions. And then of yep. course you have the Lego Ecto One, looks amazing. And then of course you also have like the really high quality looking figures from the first Ghostbusters movie. If you buy them all, then you can create uh, Dana uh, Zool dog. Awesome. So no, it just I'm I'm super hyped for that movie because everything I've heard about it, it it's awesome. You have the you know most of the original cast kind of coming in to to, to give a, a big salute and a nod to what was it's it, it's a sequel to the first two movies that is a sequel in a way of like paying homage to what was. And I never you know I never did see the 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 answer the call. Ghostbusters all female cast and it wasn't because they were all female. I, I don't I don't want that to be thought. Everything I saw in the movie, I just didn't seem like it was going to be my brand of humor. My issue with that movie is really simple. It had a great cast. The idea is okay. You know, the concept is, you know, okay, sure, you want to reboot the series and you want to try to make it chicks, I get it. Uh, but the execution was terrible, and it's not memorable. And I've watched the movie, and I've tried to get into the movie, and it's not. It's just a big bowl of nope. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Nope, busters. I've never really, uh, I've never really wanted to because here's, because here's the thing, when it comes to, I'm so fucking fickle with my brand of humor. You know, if it is, like, a newer movie, odds are I don't want to watch it. <laughs> it. It is so hard. Do you have any idea how, like, how how hard it was? Like, I did not watch the first Hangover movie. For a good couple of years before, after it came out. And I didn't even think it was that funny. And I never watched the other ones. I didn't care. I, I And I didn't watch Bridesmaids. I, my, I saw part of it and I'm like, this is the, the kind of comedy where everyone's just yelling all the time. And I'm just like, it's like slapstick, but like step on a rake. And then you step on 40 rakes and everyone's just yelling. Um... And so, then somebody poops in the street. Yeah, that. Um, I think it was like last year we finally sat down and watched um, this, uh, this Is the End. Oh, I love that movie. So here's the thing. I stayed away from it because, again, it's that brand of humor. And I finally watched it. And what won me over is that it was just complete and utter com ridiculous. It is like it, – it, it is just ridiculous. Like, there's no such thing in that movie as jumping the shark, because the whole damn movie jumps the shark. It ends. The movie with, is the shark, bro. It ends with a Backstreet Boys segment in heaven. What can't the end f a can't end a movie better than that? What the fuck? You know, I, I want to say we watched that movie. It was, it was either right on the same night or right around the same time I watched Birdman for the first time. That movie's also amazing, dude. Yes, I mean. I know we're kind of just rolling off the rails here, just kind of gushing about some other movies, but no. If you've ever, like, one thing I really appreciated about, appreciated about Birdman were, like, the long, continuous shots. 
Well, the whole movie is a long, continuous shot. No, no. It, it goes from continuous shot to continuous shot. It, they're, they're That's still... what I'm saying. They didn't segment anything in short shot is what I guess I was trying to say. Like, it's like it's uh, all built on that frame. Yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of really cool stuff that kind of goes along to that and into that process. But another thing is, is that they also had some really creative cuts to get around the fact they were one long shot. Anytime that somebody goes through a door and the camera has to follow them. Some of those are cuts, but they were just so smooth you never noticed it. Brilliant. Because they're cut, uh, I believe they're cut to frame. So it's like if they wanted to use a different take for something going on outside that room, they just spliced it to the point where it went right into it because the camera followed the same path. Ah. Uh, uh, I do want to say before we get too far away from Deadpool 3 that, that it also has new writers. Oh, Bob, the Bob's uh, Burgers, uh, right? Wendy Molyneux and Lizzie Molyneux Loglin uh, are writing Deadpool 3. And like you said, they write for Bob's Burgers for several years. They're also, uh, they also wrote a new series called The Great North, which is premiering on, uh, in 2021 on Fox and has already been renewed for a second season without anybody seeing it. So that says something. Speaking of shows that got, got seasons, uh, the Last of Us series has been ordered to full season already. I saw that. That's very exciting. And it's going to be written by the show by the showrunner, the guy uh, the guy that did Chernobyl, and it's going to be uh, written by the guy who wrote the game. Oh, that's amazing! So, do you think they're going to do the uh, Walking Dead type thing and take liberties and change the story drastically, or do you think we'll get an almost um, a, re a an exact retelling of that story because? you know the last of us is an amazing game game of the year all the accolades there's so many amazing things to say about the game that we've talked about on this show a, a couple times and you've talked about on game addicts as well but like the whole world doesn't know that story yet yeah. and that's what they're trying to tip is to get the the you know the household wife and the guy that works 40 hours a week and slams beers in the bar but never touches a video game controller to get into that series from what i understand the way that it has been described by the by the showrunner is that he does not want to change the story he doesn't want to change who joel and ellie are and doesn't want to change their story what he does want to be able to do is now have the liberty to tell more stories in that world Whereas in a show, you would have that by being, being able to focus on other characters and having a more bigger cast versus the video game is, is, is centered directly on their trajectory. And there's characters that weave in and out of that. With the show, you would be able to take uh, here and there an episode or segments of episodes where you don't follow them. You're following some other people. You're following Henry and Sam. And you're getting to know them before, maybe before or maybe right after they, they they join up with with the group. You get a little flashback where you get to see what happened with them before, giving you a little bit more uh, exposition. And then can you imagine being able to, for people not knowing the full story, uh, seeing that and getting to know those characters. Like, okay, they're spending time with these characters. This is going to be interesting to see where they go. And then you and me know where that story goes. It's very Walking Dead-esque again. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like I sit here right now, we're talking, and I can already see the season six Negan moment you know with the bat but it's it's different and uh the story definitely shifts uh I need to finish Last of Us 2 yeah uh stupid Avengers got me sidetracked and that's my that's gonna be my long haul winter finish game I'm gonna sit down and put some put some hardy hours into Last of Us 2 because I was like about a little over a quarter way through I was really vibing the game so uh yeah brando i was gonna say i know we've only got a little bit of limited time here there's three more headlines i want to just briefly touch and weave on uh it seems like because of party city there's a big spoiler for the venom movie potentially yeah uh as the new costume for venom 2 is not just a black suit with a venom mask he actually has the spider emblem on his chest i'm uh that's one of those situations where it's like, okay, 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 okay. How do you market to kids who already know Venom because of all the other mediums he's in? You put the little thing on his chest and it sells better. Yeah. We might not get that in the movie at all. Right. But it is a tiny possibility that it could be a leadoff, and that could be maybe a tip that we're getting Tom Holland in the movie officially. And I know that's only been rumor and conjecture right now. We have not got anything official in that world. But maybe that's a little bit of a sign that it's possible. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, uh, I but I caught 
I thought the exact same thing that you did, that it could be licensed, but still a general uh, character costume licensed through Marvel, and it could be marketed as, hey, Venom 2, that movie that came out, remember that? Here's this, you know? And, yeah, I mean, it's 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 definitely not a shoe in that that's what we're going to get in the movie. And, of course, with all the room, with, you know, the whole thing with Tom Holland was a whole rumor anyway. I, I'm fully expecting to go into that movie and have him not be in the movie because the moment that I start thinking about it too much, then my brain starts going wild. And then if I watch the movie and he's not in it at all, I'm, I'm going to be disappointed. Whereas bombs your review and it changes your overall expectation mm-hmm. because you've hitched your ideas to something that doesn't exist. Exactly. And I would just rather go into that movie with a complete open mind and see how, how they're going to further progress the character of Eddie and and the Venom character because there's really two separate characters there, which I thought that was really well done in the first movie by making them two separate entities. Um, but then, well, yeah, and then you also are going to have Cletus and, and Carnage, Carnage that are two separate entities, mm-hmm. and and that's going to be great. Mm. It's great to see because I mean Woody Harrelson's great in almost everything he's in. He just plays Woody Harrelson, so like, but to see him play somebody really off hinges, uh, like like Cletus Cassidy. It's very interesting. It I was not really expecting that when it, when it came to Cletus. Uh, not not that he's a bad casting. I I don't want to say that. I just didn't expect it. I'm I, and and I'm and I'm really open to it because I thought that the first Venom movie was good, as in uh, not as good as the more modern superhero movies have been, but like uh in general i i thought it was pretty passable and and like it, you know it well some stuff it did absolutely great and other stuff it was kind of head scratcher but I, I really like what they did with this version of eddie brock um i really like what they did with the venom symbiote and how they uh, you know as, as the years have gone on we've learned that he's really like the more weakling of the symbiotes and when we were kids we thought he was the most badass of them but turns out he's just like a like a little puny thing but I, but I actually like that they didn't blow their load with uh, with putting Carnage in the first movie. They went with a different symbiote, introduce you more to that world, you know. And even though try to world build, yeah, try to world build with Venom because he's a character who deserves his own film. But you know, he's always tied to Spider Man because there's a reason he's tied to Spider Man, and that's a very difficult thing to do. But I felt like for the most part, it, for telling a movie that doesn't have Spider Man in it, they did a pretty good job. You know, the the, yeah. the the only way that it would have been better is if he had already been tied to Spider-Man before and carried forward. And now he's out in San Francisco kind of doing his own side adventure. Uh, but that's not what we got. That's not what what we're maybe not what we're getting here. But I thoroughly enjoy what we got. I like the little like the the, the back and forth between between Eddie and 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 and, 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 and the symbiote. I can't speak now. I'm getting so excited. My. uh my my tongue was uh, would not work. No, I like the back and forth between the two, and um, I like that Tom Holland, uh, not Tom Holland, Tom Hardy, <laughs> played both of them. You know, so literally he's acting <laughs> against himself. Yeah, like yes, and then he's going back and overdubbing the voice of like of the symbiote, and it's great. I, I, it's it's an aspect that you know is the movie a ten. No, hell no. It it ain't anywhere near close to a ten, but it's alright. It's pretty good, you know. Certainly wouldn't know Thor: Dark World. It's my face, just like oh, Dark World. Ugh. For those audio listeners, he just cringed for about five five seconds completely. So <laughs> it's true. I did. I full I full blown cringy styled. No man, I'm excited for what's coming up and. Uh, and, you know, it is a wonderful time of the year, and, and hopefully we can spend that wonderful time of the year being safe, you know, uh, that way. Hopefully next year we can have an even more wonderful time. Yeah, Brando. Okay, so last two little headlines quickly. We do have some set pictures that have recently dropped from the Miss Marvel Disney Plus series, really? which is very exciting. It's got uh, Kamala Khan, which is Ayman Vellani, as – She's actually dressed up as Captain Marvel, and it looks like she's on some sort of mission climbing a roof. So maybe she starts off, you know, being like Captain Marvel, trying to emulate her hero, and then, you know, stumbles onto her powers or, you know, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to tell her origins. I'm really looking forward to it. Those set pictures look really cool. Go to uh, at BR Marvel News 
on Twitter to see those pictures. And then lastly, Brando, still after the news of Wonder Woman dropping in Christmas times, Disney has said again, Black Widow will not be that. It will not be going the digital route and they're going to hold off. And I think uh, I'm almost at the point now where I think it's a bad idea. They're starting to make a bad decision here, holding off as long as they have. I mean, the fact that they're just going to delay it until May, they're just moving everything up. Uh, again, with uh, with what they just did with Wonder Woman, as I said, I really championed that, and I thought that was really cool for the fans. You know, is it the best thing monetarily? No, not really. But for the fans, for the Marvel fans, uh, to be able to say, uh, them to come out and be like, Maybe don't do it now because that you already know that Wonder Woman's coming out. You know, it's like because because you don't want to be like, well, they're doing it, so we got to do it too. No, no, no. Maybe you wait till February. You know, it's like, hey guys, look, you just had a rough winter. You know, you know, especially if it goes as bad as hopefully, like hopefully it doesn't, but but if it does, it's something to look forward to. So, so something to lift the spirits, and. Um, you know, if they just kind of say, "Hey, this is for you guys. Chin up. We're, you know, we're gonna get through this." That would be awesome. I'd be about it, man. I, I just don't see them doing it. I no. think it is a dangerous mistake, and I also feel like if they're not careful, at some point it's gonna be like, "Oh, hey guys, guess what? 2022 is the year of Marvel. A new Marvel movie will drop once a month because all of our shit's filmed, and we want to get it out to you, and we want to make money, but we don't know what to do." And then that's going to create a different problem, superhero fatigue and the like. So I, I, how they navigate these waters is going to be really interesting, bro. But as far as that is concerned, I really don't think I have any other headlines, deadlines, or the latter uh, to, to throw at you this week. Uh, is there anything that you can think of that we need to touch on? Not really, man. I think that's about going to do it for me. Awesome, brother, man. Well, let me uh, tell people where they can check us out. As always, you can go to journeyintocomics.com. Get us on all those different podcasting platforms, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Podcast, CastBox, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and many others. Just search Journey Into Comics Network. Get our amazing feed of shows. Go back through our catalog on journeyintocomics.com. The archives are there for your listening pleasure. Over a uh, like 1300 podcasts at this point for you guys to check out so a lot of content to get through if you want to check us out we're into it also get us on all the different social medias check out brandon's other podcast game addicts podcast on all the different places that he has that available which is the same as all the places we're available and at some point in the near future brando and i launching a new show rank them all with our buddies dick and nick we've got some cool stuff planned for that series in the future you guys will be seeing that sometime soon i think yep. but no, hopefully I digress. Hopefully at the beginning at the beginning of the year, uh, that's when I want to launch it. So cr fingers crossed. Hopefully that's going to be coming out uh, within the next month or two. Sounds great. Well, bro, I don't think I have anything else to talk about on this week's episode of Journey into Comics. This has been Journey into Comics 323. The ball flues. The ball flues. <laughs> See, I was going to call it most wonderful time of the year. Uh, oh, we'll call it the most wonderful time of the year with the ball flus. <laughs> you don't have to. That was see, because like, see, and but see, that's what you do though. Like you, you, you give me some of the hardest stuff I've got to thumbnail. Because how the hell can I thumbnail the ball flus? <laughs> <laughs> Why did I just envision a pair of testicles <laughs> with a thermometer sticking? <laughs> <laughs> things you can't put on youtube and and now we got the chopping the balls off the segway thing all over again I know. where you gotta find a way to test no no i think we're going with most wonderful time of the year that that'll be easy i like that well folks this has been jic 323 the most wonderful time of the year i've been nate i've been brando and as always pop your caps back and fill your brains with shit later guys <laughs>